Hi, I'm Amy George and welcome to Huntsville Hospital for Women and Children. I'm here to talk with you today about a program our staff offers to help moms who have infants with withdrawal symptoms. If during pregnancy a mom took over-the-counter medications, prescription medications, smoked, or was exposed to smoking, their baby may experience withdrawal symptoms after they are born. These symptoms in newborns can include tremors, skin rashes, jitteriness, fussiness, excessive or uncoordinated sucking, vomiting, diarrhea, sweating, excessive crying, and increased temperatures. These symptoms usually begin developing at three to four days of withdrawal. Our trained staff will likely monitor up to five days. To track your baby's condition, we use an approach called Eat, Sleep, and Console, or the letters ESC. This proven approach helps us reduce the length of a baby's stay from approximately 22 days to as few as eight days in some cases. When you get settled into your room, labor and delivery nurses will begin caring for you and will ask what medications you took during pregnancy. If some of those medications crossed over to your baby, we will begin the infant withdrawal program after your baby is born. Then, after your delivery, our staff will begin assessing your baby. We will give you a brochure to read about the signs and symptoms to watch for in your baby's condition, in addition to helpful non-medication ways to soothe and care for your baby. Additional ways are also skin-to-skin -skin time with your baby, and under certain circumstances, you may be able to breastfeed. When your obstetrician says you are well enough, then you and your baby will move to a new room in the mother-baby unit so that you can be together. This transition gives moms time to become familiar with their baby's needs and time to learn the appropriate type of care you can give your baby. It will be here that staff will begin evaluating your baby when he or she is between four and six hours old. After that, your baby will be checked every three to four hours after feedings to ensure that he or she is relaxed and satisfied with feedings. The nurses need you to tell them when your baby is finished eating so that we can begin this assessment of your baby and teach you about the eat, sleep, and console approach. Our staff is here to take care of you and your baby. It's important that you talk openly with your nurses and physicians. Remember, you are the best treatment for your baby and we need your participation. We will guide you on how to feed and provide the best care for your baby. Babies experiencing withdrawal symptoms may have uncoordinated eating patterns, may have trouble staying on the breast for 10 minutes, or may have trouble taking 10 milliliters of breast milk or formula from a bottle. This typically occurs within 10 minutes of showing hunger cues. Your baby will show you he or she is hungry when they begin rooting, lip smacking, sucking on hands, or crying. Babies experiencing withdrawal symptoms respond best to breast milk, so we encourage you to breastfeed. Most of the medications that pass through breast milk are safe for your baby, but there are some medications that are not safe. We will have lactation consultants ready to talk to you to determine when it is safe to use your breast milk. We want you to be successful in breastfeeding, but don't worry if you're unable to breastfeed. We will give you a special gentle formula for feeding your baby. Now let's talk about your baby's assessment. Here are some of the questions your nurse might ask. Does your baby have poor feeding? We will provide you with a parent diary so you can keep track of feeding times and volumes. We want you to be honest. If you get frustrated with feeding, we have people here to help you. It may be hard to get the baby to latch on or eat at first, and we want you to know that you are not alone. Our second question will be, did your baby sleep less than one hour after feeding? We will teach you how to help your baby sleep with skin-to-skin -skin contact, swaddling, and holding. Your baby will be evaluated while in your arms by nurses or physicians. The third and final question is about calming and consoling your baby. We will ask, is the baby unable to console on his or her own with caregiver support within 10 minutes? We will then determine how easy or difficult it is for your baby to get comfortable. Your nurse will rate the consolability of your baby on a scale of one to three. An answer of one would be that the baby soothes with little support. This means that the baby self-soothes or easily soothes with caregiver interventions. 
An answer of two would be that the baby is soothed with some caregiver support. This means that your baby is easily soothed with skin-to-skin -skin contact, swaddling or holding, rocking or swaying, and sucking on a pacifier. An answer of three would be that the baby requires much caregiver support to be soothed. This means that your baby has difficulty responding to any caregiver efforts to help stop crying or has difficulty soothing or calming down within 10 minutes. Anytime the number three is scored on this consoling assessment, your nurse will explore additional options for you. Here are some of the ways to console your baby when they are experiencing withdrawal symptoms. Rooming together. We encourage you to be with your baby as often as possible. Skin-to-skin -skin contact. We want you to have skin-to-skin -skin contact with your baby when you are fully awake. Holding. Gentle rocking can help soothe your baby. Swaying. Swaying in a flexed position may also help to soothe your baby. Feeding. Feeding your baby on demand after he or she shows signs of hunger cues can help your baby relax. Being quiet. Providing a low stimulation environment can help calm your baby to sleep. Try to keep the room quiet, have low light levels, and limit cigarette smoke exposure. Sucking. Allow your baby to suck on his or her fingers or pacifier after feeding. Limiting visitors. We ask that you limit visitors. Only invite visitors who will be quiet and supportive for you and your baby. Cluster care. We will actively check the baby's vital signs, diaper changes, and conduct exams. This coordinated care check will help you and your baby sleep with fewer interruptions. Safe sleeping. Please ask for help if your baby will not sleep in the bassinet. Do not fall asleep with your baby in your arms. Your baby cannot sleep in the bed with you because this increases the risk of sudden infant death syndrome or SIDS. Co-sleeping can also increase the risk of falls and possible skull fractures in your baby. And we encourage you to sleep while your baby is sleeping and try to get as much rest as you can. If none of these methods work for your baby, we will have a full care team huddle, which may include the caregiver, nurse, social worker, and physician. This group will work to explore treatment options and consider starting treatment with medication if needed. We want to make sure you are included in your baby's treatment plans, so please talk to your nurse if you have any concerns. Now I'm going to show you some ways to console your baby. You can swaddle your baby with a sleep sack, or you can use a blanket. To swaddle, fold the blanket line like this and place your baby in the center with the shoulders just below the fold. Take one edge of the blanket, bring it over the baby, and tuck the corner underneath the baby. Then bring the bottom of the blanket up and then take the last corner of the blanket across the baby and tuck it under. It needs to be snug, but not too snug. You should still be able to put your hand into the baby's blanket. You should always place the baby on his or her back to sleep, but side lying while holding the back against your chest and comforting the baby is helpful to calm him or her to sleep. Another technique is called shushing. Shushing is essentially white noise. You can use a white noise machine. Just make sure the machine is outside of the baby's crib. You can also perform shushing yourself. Keep your mouth a few inches away from the baby's ears and go like this. Shh. You want your shushing to be a couple decibels higher than the baby's crying so the baby can hear you. Next is swaying or swinging. You will hold the baby like this and move back and forth like a windshield wiper. You can do it fast or you can do it slow, whichever your baby prefers. Another example is sucking. This can either be breastfeeding, bottle feeding, or a pacifier. Some babies may prefer a combination of these. Experiment with all of them and use whatever your baby likes. If your baby needs medication for withdrawal, do not think you have failed. This is simply a different treatment to get your baby healthy. We have a very high level nursery and experienced staff in the neonatal intensive care unit if your baby needs special medical attention for medication treatment and continued monitoring. In the neonatal ICU, nurses will continue with ESC in addition to the Finnegan scoring tool and will review this scoring tool with you so that you're aware of how we are assessing your baby. 
We want you to visit your baby in the neonatal ICU as often as possible. Although there is not space for moms to sleep, the ICU does have rockers for you to use during your visit. We will give you education materials so that you can continue care when your baby is discharged. Our hospital social worker will provide you with the other resources you need for success when you and your baby go home. We hope this video gave you a better understanding of how we care for babies who are experiencing withdrawal symptoms. Remember, you are the best treatment for your baby, and we hope to work alongside you to provide the best outcome for your baby. If you have any questions during your baby's stay, please ask the nurses or physicians in our unit. We want you to be an active participant in your baby's recovery. Thank you.